Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm in trouble when I stand up on an Adventist pulpit 22 minutes to one on the Sabbath. It's the church I grew up in. When that time comes, ain't nobody's mind is on the pulpit anymore. Folks are, minds are locked to their lunch. And those were good old lunches back down in Southfield, St. Elizabeth. Anybody from Southfield, St. Elizabeth? Okay, praise the Lord. We have some company here. Wait, is, is um, it that point? Tremendous, thing? tremendous. But I hope, I don't know what time you finish church here normally. Daddy, I wanted the silver plate. Just preach. God. Um, but a, a few, um, a few housekeeping matters. Hello. I'm grateful Daddy. for the invitation Hello. to be with you today. And for the next two weeks, Daddy. for the next two weeks, you will have to put up with me. Is that all right? I yeah, just two weeks and then I'm out of here. You can return to your normal life. Um, we will be here um, every night this week, except Thursday night. Thursday night is when you will be off and do your cooking and your laundry. And I'd suggest you just cook a whole lot on Thursday night. So you can have for the rest of the week. Because we're going to be out here every night. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. Amen. That don't sound too strong. You know. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Good, 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 good. Don't scare me now. <laughs> scare me. Let me welcome those of you who are watching online, wherever you're from. We're delighted to have you here uh, as we worship together. And all of those watching from the various parts of the United States. I want to really say... And a prayer up for the folks in North Carolina who have suffered major devastation this week. And I know we may be having folks from North Carolina watching. And if this Sabbath you're not able to be at church and you do have electricity and um, Wi-Fi, um, internet, and you're joining us, we're very special welcome to all our folks there and those in other parts of Florida, up north, who are devastated by the hurricane. I was a little worried that you all are going to be washed out, but the Lord has spared West Palm Beach. Amen? Amen. Yeah, God is good, and we just have to give him thanks and praise. Um, so, because our time is already gone, let me, let me just share with you What's going to happen this week? Um, I'm going to ask these guys to put up my sermon topic. So right now we're going to crack this subject open. Faith, facts, faith, and fiction. We're clearing the fog of the last days. The last days. I'm going to crack that in a few minutes. Last days, the Bible says, will be very foggy ones. We're going to unpack that and clear the fog in the last days. Is that all right? That's, that's the, in the next few minutes. And then tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, if I can get this thing working here, uh, or maybe I'm the one. I'm, good. Tomorrow, we're not, tomorrow evening at 7, the last time God spoke, what did he say? Tomorrow evening. The last time God spoke. That's tomorrow evening. Don't miss it. And then on Monday evening, big subject coming your way. It's called procrastination. Daddy, isn't mm -hmm. that the Bible word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear some Daddy, guilty people in the Bible audience. Some it's people will not make it to the kingdom because of procrastination mm -hmm. that's on Monday night and then on Tuesday night Tuesday night here's a big one coming spot check at the pearly gates that's gonna be on Tuesday night you don't want to miss it at all and then on Wednesday night Wednesday night big one Wednesday night 
Here's when the night. So you want to go to heaven and rest? Mm -hmm. I want to tell you what has to be done for that to happen. So you want to go to heaven and rest? Yep. There are some problems before we can get that done on Wednesday night. And then on Thursday night, there's no meeting. But on Friday night when you come, here's a big presentation. The roll call up yonder. And I'm going to allow you to get a peep into the roll call. I'm, I'm dead serious. Yes. I have a sample of it already. And I'm going to allow you to check if your name is on it. That's on Friday night. So you miss any of these nights at your own risk. All week we'll be here. Are we together? Make sure you're here every single night. And by the way, don't stay home and watch it. It's online for the people who are far from here. But the people who are in town, you need to be here. Amen? Yeah, you know, say, Pastor, I'm going to stay home and watch it. No, no, we want you to come personally and watch it. For the entire two weeks, we'll be cracking on the subject. God is still coming because I am, I am burdened with that topic, so burdened that during the coronavirus shutdown, I produced this book entitled, Is God Still Coming? Make sure you get a copy of it. Most of what you will hear will come out of this, and we'll be giving a copy of this to some folks who are here tonight. By the way, um, how many visitors are here? You're not a member of the Adventist Church. Raise your hand. You're not a member of the Adventist Church. Okay. And now, I have one here. And because you are the one that is closest to the preacher, you get a personal copy of my book. Come on, give her a round of applause. Yeah, 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 it's good. Yep, that's a little. It's good to sit up front. <laughs> amen, amen. Um, it's on Amazon.com. You can pick up your copy. Is God Still Coming? We'll look at how end time events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. Blow your mind away. Okay. Let's go into our subject for today. We're talking about the facts, faith, and fiction, and how do we clear the fog. I'm going to ask our praise team to join me. We're going to do a theme song, one verse of it, as we get ready. Can I ask you to stand with me? You've been sitting for a mighty long time. Get some oxygen in your lungs and in your bloodstream as we get ready for this beautiful presentation. Holy words, long preserved for a walk. Here we go. Holy words, long preserved for a walk in this world. They resound, they resound. God's own heart, God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words sing words of life, words of life, and words of hope. Give us Give us strength, help us go, help us go, in this world, in this world, where we roam. Thank you. 
The moment has arrived to open your words to your people. Please, Lord, speak to us all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. There, there are many prophetic warnings about the last days. In fact, your Bible is filled with prophetic warnings about the last days. But if you take them separately, you may not get the impact of what God is trying to say. But if you put them together, then it blows your mind. So, let me share a few of them. I'm in the book of Second Timothy, chapter 3. I'm in verse 1, Second Timothy, chapter 3. I'm in verse 1. And from the New King James Version, I'd like you to follow there, guys. We'll put it on the screen for those of you who don't have a Bible. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. Paul writes to Timothy. Paul says, But know this, comma, that in the come on let me read in the last days that's what I'm talking about here that's what my focus is on that's where we are right now am I right yes in the last so anything the Bible has to say about the last days should hold your attention amen yeah because we are actually living in the last days so you ought need to read up everything you can read up about the last days. Well, here's what Paul writes to um, Paul um, Timothy writes. Paul writes to Timothy rather. He says, "But know this: in the last days, perilous times will come." Boy, had he known what's going on in Florida. No, right. And so when I read that, when I read that perilous time, I thought. And then there's a colon. I, I thought the next thing will be he's going to describe the times. Because he says perilous times will come. So I'm expecting him to describe the times. But when I realized he didn't describe the times, what he described was the people. Mm -hmm. The people who will live in the last days. Yep. Here's it, here's it. Next verse. He says, For for men will be lovers of themselves. Holy, holy, holy. Comma. Men will be lovers of money. Talk to me about the Americans who love money. You can't say Men will be bolsters. In the last days, last day people will be proud. Is the church still with me? Last day people will be blasphemers. Talk to me about that one. Who speak as if there is no God? Some who behave like they are God themselves. Is the church with me? Yeah, yeah, Paul, there, comma. He says, last day people will be, this children will be. Lord help us if the Bible writers were in town. Amen. Many of us are blown away by the level of disrespect and disobedience from the little ones. One of the most stressful job on planet earth today is a teacher. 
So she's new to the There was a time when a teacher was revered. When, a teacher, when you see a teacher on the road, you pull up yourself. Now they cuss out teacher. People don't want to be teacher anymore. Is the church with me? Last day children. Disobedient to parents. Come on. <laughs> Last day people will be unthankful and unholy and more and last day people so, will be unloving um, last day people will be unforgiving was, was the and why are they slanderous so, <laughs> Last day people will have no self-control. Do whatever they want to do, eat what they want to want, go where they want to have their own body. My body, my my body, my choice. I stepped in for two reasons. Last day people. First of all, by the way, I, I wish I could send a message to those people who said my body, my choice. Because my message is your body is not yours. Last time I checked, it belongs to God. So at one point, know ye not that your body it. is the temple of the Holy God? Not yours. Last day people will be she brutal. And I could feel it. Last and day I people heard. will be despisers That's of good. Oh, we not the and guy. I people, last day people and will be traitors. Up. Holy moly. At work, traitors. At church, traitors. At home, but traitors. <laughs> and they head strong too. Can't tell them nothing. Because they know everything. I Last day people. Her, and they're haughty. I don't know her personal, you know, stories and, all, and by the way, those who claim to be I Christians. Last day people. So they are lovers <laughs> of pleasure. They are rather lovers no. of God. And Paul is not finished. He's still writing in the next verse. And he, say, and he says... These people tend, last day people will have a form of godliness, but they have absolutely no power. And hear me, hear me. And many of our churches are filled with last day people. Form. Form. They're good at form, but lack the power. And then Paul says, if you find those, stay away from them. This is your stuff. Last day, people. That was just one. Here's another one. Here's another one. The, 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 he talks about he talks about people in the church who have a form of godliness but have no power. Here's again Paul writing to Timothy in First Timothy this time, chapter four. This guy was. As if this guy was living in our age. First Timothy 4 verse 1. Here's what, here's what he has to say. Um, First Timothy 4. He says, help me read. Let's read like kindergarten children. One, two, three. Here we go. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, that's last day again. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, you know, our time. What will happen? Some will depart from the church. Mm-hmm. We should ex Daddy. we must expect people to leave the church in the last days. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And I wonder why are they gonna leave the church, Brother Paul? Answer they are giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons in the last day. You know, last day church people will be messed up. That's what Paul is saying. And he, there's a comma. Ah, uh, here, next verse, next verse. Here he says, and these people will be speaking lies in hypocrisy. Ha! Last day church people will have their conscience seared with what? Hot iron, no conscience. One of the worst person you can meet up is a church member who has no conscience. Hear the preacher. Things don't look too good in the last days. They are forbidden to marry. But hey, you know, I don't know. Paul is a real prophet for you, you know. Because if Paul ever heard about the millennials, then you know many millennials don't want to get married. 
But they have another guest coming. Because by the time they want to get married, oh Lord, we'll talk about that some other time. Last of it. And, and forbidding to abstain from food which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. The, the last day situation. Let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> this is even worse. I mean, John chapter 2, 1 John, sorry. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. Here, here's what John said. If you happen to live in the last days, 1 John chapter 2, here's what John has to say. This, if you happen to live in the last days, 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Here's John. Read for me. John says, little children, it is the last hour. Mm -hmm. The same people, everybody pointing that out to us. So what? And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come right so uh, watch this watch this watch this by which we know that it is the last day so we should expect antichrist behavior in the last days so here's Paul here is here is John giving us a little preview of who these people likely to be answer these they help me read these antichrist folks they went out from us oh holy 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 they went out from us which means that they used to be, oh, come with the preacher. They went out from us, which means they used to be a part of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they were not of us. They were in of us, but they were part of us, but not of us. Come on, come on, stay with the preacher. They were part of us, but they're really not of us. Yes, uh, for if they had been of us, they would not have, con they would have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were really of us mm. last day last day Matthew 24 verse 12 throw something else in the last day with all of this things don't really look good you know Matthew 24 12 says if you ever happen to be in the last day here's another situation that you will face 24 12 says because help me read because lawlessness hello California lawlessness hello New York because lawlessness will be all over the place the love of many will grow cold in the last days. See, if you have a choice to live, this is not the age you want to live in. It's bad. It's bad. Okay. What effect do all of these things have on the last day church? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Revelation 3. I'm talking about facts, fictions, and faith. Revelation 3. Here's the letter God writes to us. Verse 14. Revelation 3, verse 14. Here's how these things affect the last day church that you and I have membership in. So unto the angel of the church of where? Laodicea write these things says the the amen this is the last letter God wrote to the last existing church on the planet before he returns is the church with me and seventh day Adventists have long established that the Laodicean church represent us. Can I repeat that for you? We are the Laodicean. You have membership in Laodicea. Is the church with me? Yes, yes, yes. So that letter is written to us who are in church at this. Here's the letter. 
Next verse. We go to the next verse. I know your works that you neither cold nor hot. And I wish. Ha, Jesus. God says, I wish the last day church members would be colder. In other words, God still prefer us to be cold than the lukewarm state that we're in. Is the church with me? I wish you were either cold or hot. Next verse. So then, because you are lukewarm, either neither cold or I will, keyword, strong word, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Hear me when I say, if you are the last church before Jesus comes, this is not good news. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So with all our preaching and teaching and all this Sabbath school stuff we're doing and our vegetarian diet and all the kind of stuff that we're doing, God says, God says, your spiritual condition give me upset stomach. Are you with me? God says, I can't take you to heaven like this. This is a warning letter. And what was the problem, Lord? What is the problem? Next verse. What's here, here? Here's the problem. You are in this position because you think that you're rich. And you think that you're wealthy. And you think you don't need nothing. You think you have the truth. And you don't need nothing. Hey. And you don't realize that you are wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind. So, so when you put the whole version, come on, when you put all that we just read a while together, last day don't look too good. We are in serious trouble. That's why this preacher is so burdened. And yet, that's not the text that bothers me about the last day. So here's the one, when I throw this one on top of all of what I've just said, this is the text that bothered me. I'm in 2 Peter chapter 3. Peter, good old Peter, the Peter that we love to hate. 2 Peter chapter 3, I'm in verse 1. You need to, you need to find this one. This is, the t t this is the text. When you, when you throw this on top of all that we just said a while ago, then you realize the, the, how, how things are set up in the last days. Peter says, Beloved, come on. He says, I now write to you this second epistle. Epistle means letter, right? Peter says, I am now writing to you my second letter. He says, in both of which I stir up your pure minds. By way of what? Put another way. I wrote these two letters to remind you. Remind you of what? Here is it. That you may be mindful of one. What is it? The words which were spoken before by the... I wrote these letters to remind you what the prophets have said to the church. And number two, and to remind you of the commandment from us as apostles from the Lord. Then he puts a comma in the letter. And then here where he goes now. Verse three. Here is Peter's burden. Hey, here is Peter's burden. Here's why Peter wrote the two epistles. Here's what Peter want the church in the last days who are complete, church is completely messed up. All kind of stuff happening in the church, distracted, lukewarm church. Peter says, I am dispatching these two letters to remind the last day members about this. About what? Here is it. He says, knowing this first. In other words, first above what? First before what? First, before all the things that I've just told you, this is the most important thing I want you to keep in your memory. Is the church with me? Yes. Know this first. 
What it is that we need to know first, Brother Peter, here's it. That scoffers will come in the last days. Last day again, you know, Virgin. Last day again. If you happen to be alive in the last days, Peter says, scoffers will turn up. Scoffers. So we'll come back to that. In the last day, walking according to their own lust. Hang on, hang on. Peter is onto something here. Next verse, next verse. Saying, come on, help me read. Saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In other words, they're saying nothing changes. Where is the evidence that Jesus is coming? So, una pregunta, one question for you. Who are these scoffers? Paul, um, um, Peter didn't tell us. I look up the word scoffers. But nowadays you can Google anything, you know. You know what scoffers mean? Mockers. Those who jeer. So, who are these mockers? Well, I can tell you a few things about them. One, they are not, they are, they, they are not street vendors. No, no, no. These are not, these are not drug pushers. Mm -mm -mm. The, these scoffers are members of the intelligentsia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are these they are university professors. These are scientists and researchers. Are you with me? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stay, stay with the preacher. These are the folks who are asking for evidence. Come on, preacher, preacher. They are asking for what? Evidence. They are asked, what does your research say? Because nowadays, you know, research is God. Did you know that? Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, in COVID, everybody said, trust the science. And I say, garbage, trust God. Trust God. Science must not replace. Science must not replace God. Trust God. They, they, they're asking for every, Oh Lord, stay with the preacher. They're asking for a, Since you all said Jesus is coming, since you all said God is coming, where is your evidence? Right? The little man on the street. Uh, don't ask those questions. Those are intellectual people. What does your research say? Well, well, Peter answers them. You know, I, I'm going to share something with you in a minute that the church has been answering them the wrong way, including this preacher. And the Lord showed me the right way to answer them. But Peter, Peter gave us a little insight into them before. Here's what Peter said. I'm in verse 4. I'm in verse 4. Peter says, can we go to the next verse? Our verse 5, I'm not too sure which of the verses. It says, it says here's Peter. These people come asking for evidence. Watch this, watch this. For this, they willingly, come on, preach with me. They willingly forget. What does that mean? They willingly forget. They purposely and deliberately choose to forget. To forget what? Ah, to forget that, hear me, read, read with me, that by the word of of God, the heavens and the earth that were of old were destroyed by the word of God. I mean, verse six. Look at the next verse. Um, by which the flood that then existed perish, being flooded with water. They forget that. I mean, next verse. Look at the next verse. Paul says, "But the heavens and the earth. Watch this. The heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the pause. Can I go to preach here? I go to preach here. So." Paul says, these skeptics, these mockers, these intelligent professors who are asking for evidence of Christ's coming, they deliberately and purposely chose to forget that by the word of God, he destroyed the world before, and by the same 
word, he's about to destroy this world again. That's what Paul is saying. They chose to forget that. But, Paul, but Peter said, don't you forget that because this current world is being preserved. Look at the text. Yeah, look at the word. Uh, the heavens and the earth which are now. Come on, preach with me. The heavens and the earth which are now. The ones we are now are being what? Preserve. Key word there. Preserve. Key word there. Preserve. Tell brother, tell brother and the President Biden that you don't have to worry about nuclear weapons. Hey, tell Netanyahu, you don't have to worry about Iran having nuclear weapons because nobody can destroy this earth because this earth is preserved by the word of God. And when God is ready, he will take it out all by himself. Doesn't matter how many nuclear bombs they have, you can't destroy this planet. Tell those people who are jumping all over climate change, don't worry, this earth is under preservation. That's what the text says. The heavens and the earth which are now are preserved by the same word that destroyed the first one and are reserved for fire. Are you there, are you there with me? Planet Earth, hey, hey, let me know. West Palm Beach is on a reservation for fire. Mm -hmm. All that you build up in your lifetime on a reservation for fire. Your 401k, fire. Nice house, fire. Nice car fire everything you have reserve for fire and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it it is risen those are two words underline them in your bible two words preserve and come on let me preach preserve and reserve <laughs> amazing stuff they are reserved. So, 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 the, 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 Peter says, these hypocritical scoffers, they know very well, but they choose to forget because their agenda is evil. What their agenda is, they are trying to, watch the preacher, they are trying to sow a seed of doubt in the minds of the last day people that God is not coming back. Mm -hmm. They are trying, let us need to drop a little doubt in your mind that God is not coming back. So they ask, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? Look at the next verse, look at the next verse. But Peter says, beloved, don't forget like one thing. Opening song. That the opening Lord, song with the Lord, the first thing to a day done. is a thousand years. So you're telling me and a thousand years is a day. I'm in verse 9. And then he says, here is the song. reason like, why the Lord, no hear the preacher. Here is the reason why God has oh, not come back no, as yet. It makes no sense. No, we don't need opening the song. Lord um, is not slack scripture. concerning his promises so, as some count slackness. But here's so the reason. Said, but God is love and suffering. Uh, is, it, is the church hearing me? God is long suffering. God's patience is being used up, hoping that somebody else will come in before it is too late. Just take over. So to create but God's long suffering is. towards us. He well, is you, hear me preach. He is not willing that any well, should you? perish, yeah. but that all should come to repentance. Is the church hearing me? That's why God hasn't put in his appearance as yet. But how long is he gonna wait? How long? Waited on Noah 
120 years. And then one day he says, come now, that was your last sermon. Amen. He that is filthy remain. Filthy still. He that is holy will remain. Holy still. One day will be the last sermon from this desk. The problem is that we will not know when the last sermon is. He says, come now. That was your last sermon. I guess no one said, Lord, but nobody came to the altar call. Oh, man. God says, no, even if you preach another 100 years, ain't nobody coming. Come. You and your family enter the ark. Long suffering. Not willing. You know, and God always. I soon, I soon let you out. Can I, can I just get five minutes? How are we doing outside, guys? You know, I know it's about God. God does everything in His power to give us a second chance. Went to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it. And the Lord says, hey, 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 do you have anybody in your house who not yet saved? Lord says, yeah, I have two boys downtown. And the angel said, go for them. Get long suffering. Is the church with me? We have in these two weeks to give somebody. I don't know who it is. God is sending one last chance to somebody in this town. Long suffering. But there comes a time when God says, that's it. Enough is enough. Mercy dear, mercy gate is closed. So, let me wrap this up and send you home. For how long? So, so they, these scoffers ask, where is the evidence that God is still coming? And church people, including myself, over the years, have pointed, oh, we have a lot of evidences. We are pointed to climate change and the recent storm, Milton and Helene and all the others. And the historic tornadoes that passed through Florida. Evidence of God's coming. Oh, we are pointed to wars. Am I right? And rumors of war. Man, we have evidence down in, in Israel and Gaza. We have war. We have evidence in Russia and Ukraine. We have evidence of war. We point to those things. We point to disaster diseases. COVID-19. We point to as evidence of God's coming as cancer, diabetes, and all that. We, we point to the rise in, in, in homosexuality and the rise in immorality as evidence. We point to the rise in violence and crime and school shooting left, right, and center, and mass murder. Evidence. We point to all of these things as strong evidence. And then the Lord spoke to my heart. I was guilty of doing that. And the Lord says, that's not the evidence. In law, we call that circumstantial evidence. But where is the empirical evidence? Hear me, preacher. Let me say, for those of you watching online, the single most empirical evidence we have that God is coming back is because God says so himself. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. God, by the same word that destroyed the earth back then, God says so himself. And God can't lie. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. God's words are his deeds. God is the only person whose word he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. God's word is not, it's not breeze, it's action. When God says something, you can believe it because it's fact. It's fact in history, it's fact in present, and it's fact in the future. The evidence the church has that God is coming is because God says so. He says, if I go, I'll come back again and receive you unto myself. We need no other evidence. God says, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. We need no other evidence. So the scholars, the scoffer says, oh yeah, but that only work for church people. We, we want... We want something to hold on to. So I said, okay. 
The Lord says, here's one more. Here's one more. And just in case, just in case I have any scoffers in this congregation. Just in case there's any scoffers who listen to this recording, this sermon, years down the road. Just in case I have any, 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 any doubters. Maybe you're not even a scoffer, but you're on the fence. You're not even too sure. Here's the last piece of evidence for you. I'll change it again. Calvary. Calvary. What does... Stay with the preacher. What does Calvary have to do with God coming again? Oh, I'm glad you ask. Come, 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 come. Come with me. Come with me. Why did Jesus die? Why did he climb Calvary's hill, gave up his life, being crucified like a criminal on a cross? Why answer to save us? Does the church agree? I think that's why they yes. did it last time. But what will happen when he finished save us? Save us to do what? What next after he save us? Come on, come on, stay with the preacher. What does save us mean? Well, he forgive my sins. Okay, and then what next? Watch me, watch me, watch me. None of us can make it to the kingdom of God. None of us can go to heaven. None of us can inherit eternal life unless our sins are forgiven. Watch me, watch me where I'm going with this. Watch me with this. So, if Jesus is not coming back for us, who he died for, then why die? Then why die in the first place? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, this, Daddy, why give your life quick question. Yeah. for somebody you're not coming back miss, for? Did Miss Bowman's class on Khan Academy? Yeah. Okay. I did. You, you saw your other classmates in there? Um, Why? No, I don't know how to check it. Allow yourself to be spot upon, beards pluck out, mm. nail in your hands, and drain every drop of blood out there, and die for people you're not coming back for. Which means the greatest evidence I have that Jesus is coming back is because he died for me. Does that make sense to you, no? Yeah. 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 And then you know what they say? He paid the price. So, here's a story to end. No, I didn't this So I did my bachelor's degree at Northern Caribbean University. How many have you been? Now the NCU people. Oh, few. Good. Few. Hey, good to see you. So those of us who live in the area would go to Mandeville Town on Friday to do shopping. And there's a little supermarket. I don't remember what the name of the supermarket. Um, there's a little supermarket down there near the taxi. The taxi stand is a little out. And we, and we would buy the stuff, put our groceries in a bag, leave them right at the cashier, and then go to the taxi stand to get the taxi. And when the taxi is passing, we ask him to stop so that we can pick up our purchase possession. Is the church with me? Good. So, so watch this, watch this. This is important. So if you spend your hard money to buy your grocery, amen? I can tell you one thing. You ain't passing it when the taxi passing. What happened at Calvary, look to the preacher, what happened at Calvary is that God paid for this package. 
Are you with me? Watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paid. This grocery package here, God paid for it with his blood. Is the church with me? Then he say, right now, I can't, I can't carry the package with me. So I'm going to leave it here. Already paid for. Amen. And I'll come back to pick it up. In the church with me. Why would God pay for the package and don't come back? So every one of us who were bought by the blood of Christ and paid for, just fasten your seatbelt because God is coming back for the package. And when he comes back, I want to be in the number. How many of you want to be in the number? Stand on your feet if you want to be the number. That's why. That's why the songwriter 523, pull it up in your songbook. That's why the songwriter 523 says, My faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead then he says I need no other evidence I need no other plea it is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me we're going home I don't know about you but we're going home and I'm I'm gonna pray I want to pray. I want to pray for all of my visiting friends who want to say, Preacher, pray for me that I'm in the package when the Lord comes because I want to go home too. If you're visiting with us, you're not a member of this church, and you'd like me to include that in your prayer, can I ask you to raise your hand? Say, Preacher, pray. I see the hand. Come on, raise them up. Pray for me, Preacher, that I will be in the number. I want to be in the number. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man. Pray for me, preacher. I want to make it home. 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 I need no other evidence. the next stands I'm gonna come on those of you raise your hands come let me pray with you we're going home together come on up we're going home together we're going home together you raise your hand a while ago I say excuse to your friend and come up preacher pray me up I'll be in the package I'll be in the package God bless you you're coming I'll be in the package come on up come on up come on up hey pray me up I want to be in the pickup when the Lord comes I want to be in the pickup enough for me enough for me Jesus, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Wanna be in the number, Jesus? Wanna be in the number, Jesus? Sing that song. I need no, I need no other heavy. God bless you. 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 Come on up.
church say hallelujah. hallelujah. And we say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is coming. Yeah. Ain't no scoffers can mess our brains up. He's coming. Whether we like it or not, he's coming. And when he comes, he must find somebody from Palm Spring. Amen. Must somebody must be in the number when the Lord comes. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? I have some Baba Worker's assistant. They'll give you a card. I'm going to ask you to give everybody a card. I want you to take a card and sign it up. I carry them home. I spread them out on my bed. And I pray to God for you. That God, that power of the mighty God may be upon you. Can we get some elders? Give everybody a card. Everybody a card. Can we get some ushers here? Everybody a card. Everybody a card. Everybody a card. Everybody a card. I want to give everybody a card because I'm going home to wrestle with the Lord over you. Everybody a card. Everybody a card. Everybody a card. Uh, everybody a card. Everybody a card. Put a card in everybody's hand. Just write your name, telephone number, and address. Because I'm going home to lift up your name before the Lord. Is there anybody else down there? Me. Anybody else? Anybody else? Give everybody a card and a pen. Give them a card and a pen and pencil to write. Just make sure that they write. Go ahead and write. We need some pencils here. We need some pencils here. We need some pencils here.
to be ready. I am one of those people. Life here is too hard. We can't live in one hell here and then go to another hell when we finish. No, 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 no. We go in heaven. And then my job for the next two weeks is to help all those who want to make it in the kingdom to be here. Your heads are about your eyes are. You don't take it out against me. But you'll be back tomorrow night. Amen. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night. Good, good, good. One, okay, one more card. We're just waiting on that. One more card. This could be a difference between life and death. And you can, yeah, there's some, there's some QR code for you to go ahead and scan. Those of you would like, is it a card on the QR code? Good card like this is on the QR code and for those of you watching online we hope you will fill out your cards and indicate we have a team um, just co the scan the code and we will have a team to work on that number two okay good 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 your heads are bowed oh one more card this is a late ballot coming in amen that is now your heads are bowed oh my father my God, in whom we trust. Your word is so precise, clear, and sure. The description of the last days, even though written years ago, have been fulfilled in our very eyes. Because certainly, Lord, last day people are just as describing the word. And we know, Lord, that there are those who try to sow seed of doubt in our mind that you ain't coming. But we believe your word. We trust in your word. You say you will come. And we believe in that, Jesus. And at the altar and in my hands are the cards, the written expression of your sons and daughters standing at the altar who are indicating I want to be in the number. When this world is on fire, I want God's bosom to be my shelter. At the altar are your sons and daughters who are saying, Lord, I want to be in the pickup when you come, Jesus. No, God, they have their personal challenges. They have their personal stories. They have their blunders and their setbacks. But the same way you help me, and help others you can help them to Jesus I pray your forgiveness on them I pray that you will strengthen them and oh God next week Sabbath morning will be our baptismal service here I pray every single person standing at the altar will make that commitment so that their names can be added to the Lamb's book of life so they can be in the pickup when you come bless them as they go Lord may the angel of the Lord encamp about them may they feel the spirit of the Lord around them Lord keep them from harm and danger from sicknesses and diseases and bring them back out tomorrow evening we'll do it all over again when God when the Lord spoke the last time this is our prayer we pray in Jesus name let the church say amen, amen. God bless you I understand lunch is provided for you. Amen. Amen. Lunch is provided for you. And we see you tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. We'll do it all over again.